Good Friday morning. Gators and golf with Tony Agolini. Tony, how the hell are you this morning, hey, man. sir? <clears throat> Good morning. Happy Friday. How are you? I'm, uh, well, I'm excited for the weekend. The Memorial Day weekend is uh, upon us and uh, got plans to hang out with uh, friends and family. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, about the same. We'll do some stuff around the house, maybe uh, hang out at the pool and maybe play a little golf. So we'll see. Yeah, it'll be nice. We might actually get some rain. We're, I feel like I live in Ethiopia the last three weeks. We might actually I'm, get a, I'm fine with it. My, my, uh, my, uh, backyard is constantly uh in threat of flooding so i'm fine with it bring on the drought bring on the drought i don't hear these these fake farmers saying we need rain we need rain uh no we don't no we don't we're below sea level the last thing we need is rain around here um okay um let's go ahead before before we get into the uh baseball real quick uh the softball tournament um florida's playing Florida's playing Georgia, huh? Yeah, which is uh, some motivation just because obviously it's Georgia, but um, we played Georgia in a super regional, uh, I want to say in 2017, I think. Um, I might be a year or two off there, but Georgia won that in Gainesville with a walk-off uh, home run. Um, so there's there's a revenge factor there, I guess. None of these players, I don't think, were on that team, but um, – but yeah, it'll, it'll be uh, it'll be fun. I know it's uh, 100% capacity, so it'll be a big crowd, and uh, yeah, it should be uh, should be fun. Like I said, softball. Best thing about softball is that it only takes about an hour and a half, and, and you're out of there. So yeah, I was pleasantly surprised yesterday. Florida State gets the W in L at LSU. Uh, LSU is obviously the favorite, being the higher seed, but Florida State phenomenally pitched game, and I. I felt like that they missed so many opportunities. It should have been more than a one nothing game. I mean, it had me on the edge of my seat sitting there watching the end of that where they get the leadoff single and we all know the bases are so much closer. It doesn't take much once you get the runner to second base to get the runner home. Uh, 24 played a hell of a game, the uh, third baseman and then the uh, – Starting pitcher last night was just on fire. They'll play again tonight. There, there were only two games last night. I would. I was also surprised that it started last night. I, I thought it was all starting today. So you got. Um, I figured out that Florida State was playing like I don't know three hours before first pitch. I was like, well, thank God because the Braves were off. I mean, I had nothing to watch last night because the Preds weren't coming on till nine thirty at night. Um, so today, Florida and Georgia is that the is it yeah five o'clock on ESPNU. I know a lot of people will be looking for it on SEC network, but it is on ESPNU. Florida's got a really good team ranked number four in the land. Um, I know a lot of people are picking Alabama, Oklahoma, but I, I feel like every time I watch Florida play, they look like they've got an incredible team. Yeah, they've, uh, they've, they've won a lot of games in the last inning or two, it seems like, especially like in the last two or three weeks, which is probably about when I started uh, paying a little bit more attention. But, uh, yeah, they've, they've got kind of a clutch gene. They've had some walk-offs lately, and uh, here they are. So they'll play 5 o'clock today and then at noon uh, Saturday and, and Sunday if needed. That'll be at noon um, as well. So it should be a nice, nice cool day down in Gainesville in the afternoon on, on Saturday and Sunday. Might feel like the surface of the sun. <laughs> um yeah i i was a little surprised that it was that early but i guess they're just trying to get them all televised and that's what it comes down to uh you know he, he, here's the funny thing since the sec network has become a thing especially i'd say after like after the first year i feel like espnu is a downgrade from being on the sec network because i never watch the sec network anymore i mean uh the espnu anymore because there's usually like reruns of junk on there um i'm glad to see that they're actually using the damn channel for something live and relevant last night i was flipping or two nights ago i was flipping around and on espnu of all places was usa versus hungary women's water polo and i'm like really <laughs> i mean you know a lot of cornhole on that channel lately and and but it's yeah it is weird it's it's almost like that's kind of become an afterthought now they do get a lot of stuff during college basketball but um yeah this time of year it's mostly like old games or you know cornhole tournaments it seems like that's, that's 
Yes. Yeah, I, it's, I, I, you know, I hadn't even thought of it until I saw the, the lineup the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot there's ESPN because I usually just scroll right by it. In fact, I've got it where, where you can move your channels around. I've got it as my last ESPN channel because they're they're more likely to put something on ESPN News like a a, a bleed over or whatever than right. they are on ESPNU anymore. But anyways, uh, ESPN oh, almost turned into like classics. Do you remember the old ESPN Classic? Yeah, um, that's almost yeah. what they've turned ESPNU into, and it's not like in the middle of something. I don't even know if Classic still exists. The last time I it knew doesn't. for for it to, I, it's gone altogether. Yeah, but they, I mean, they show enough. I mean, shoot, this you know, July and August, they'll show enough old games on SEC Network that they don't they don't need it. And there was some I think provider the, that I had. I don't remember who it was, but you had to pay a ridiculous amount extra to have that on. Right, and I wanted it, but I didn't want it enough to pay the extra to because I was I was kind of pissed off I was like why am I paying extra when I've got all the other ESPNs that I'm obviously paying a fee for why do I have to pay extra for that what they really ought to do is bring all that old classic junk back to the uh to the plus and just call it a day um because I I like watching the old grainy you know reruns of college football games in the 80s and 90s you know that we grew up on Ron Franklin calling a ball game or whatever right um but anyways um hopefully we'll, we'll be talking the t- this time next week of florida state and florida in the uh women's college world series Th- this is the super regionals y'all so they're playing a best two out of three so two wins and you're in and you move on to oklahoma city which is why i have the hat on today uh the sec tournament let's get into that what's your thoughts on the gators so far uh, gators have been great um I had to play on tuesday thanks to getting uh swept last weekend to uh, a really good Arkansas team. Um, and, and, and in that series, um, lost one by one run. And then the other two games, uh, they won by, I think, five and six runs. But you you gave up one big inning in each of those games. It kind of blew it open. I thought Mesla, uh, Barco, and Alamon were both fine against Arkansas. And um, that's kind of been the big story uh, for Florida and Hoover. Um, the, the two parts of it, the starters have been great. Really didn't have to use a lot of bullpen. Um, run ruled Mississippi State. Mississippi State went there, went 0-2 in a barbecue and got run ruled in both games, which was which was pretty surprising. Um, but for us, you know, getting that Tuesday game might have actually been a blessing because it knocked us out of being in the side of the bracket that you have Arkansas and Vanderbilt uh, fighting it out um, and, and Ole Miss. So Florida definitely got the easier side of the draw. Um, we got lucky with uh, – I, I really wanted to play Bama yesterday, and I'm kind of hoping we get to play Bama again tomorrow just because Bama started the same day we did. And if Bama beats Tennessee today, um, by tomorrow, they'll have played. That'll be their fifth game in five days, and, and we get a day well, off. Plus, you want to play Bama because Bama is, sucks compared to Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee right. Comes, comes and and I, I think, I think Tennessee, will, Tennessee will win today. It's that time in the tournament where everybody other than Vanderbilt tonight, um, who will throw lighter, I'm assuming, against Ole Miss, is basically like out of – their starting pitching element like you're throwing uh saturday florida will throw either scott or sprout sprout hasn't started a lot of games this year scott's been a long middle reliever all season so um saturday sunday kind of becomes like a johnny holstaff if it has to get to that that point but yeah the tournament's been great other than mississippi state getting housed twice the game's been competitive alabama tennessee came down to a runner's interference call the other day um and then uh, alabama won in the 11th um, but yeah, I, I think Bama needs another win to get in the SEC tournament. So that game against Tennessee is a uh, big, uh, I'm sorry to get in the NCAA tournament. So that game, uh, against Tennessee is big today for them bigger than it is for so, Tennessee. So kind of catch everyone up to speed who, who doesn't follow this thoroughly, uh, Tennessee and Alabama are playing at 11 AM today. Uh, and I, I believe that's on the SEC network, but they, the winner of that's going to face Florida. And then Ole Miss and Vanderbilt, they are 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 uh, fighting for the chance to play Arkansas tomorrow. The SEC championship game is is that going to be? Is that winner take all? Everything starting tomorrow is single elimination. Okay, okay, um, and really today too because these are knockout games today too. So the so SEC championship over. game is that being scheduled for? Saturday evening, like it used to be, or is it now going to be Sunday afternoon? 
it's Sunday. I'll, I'll okay. pick up a time here in a second, but yeah, it is yeah, Sunday. I'll, I'll find it. Yeah. I, okay. So, so basically what we're looking for today. So I guess what I'm a little surprised is why are the games starting this early? Is there still a chance that these two teams are going to have to go up against each other again? Three o'clock on Sunday. Um, well, Tennessee, Alabama today is they, they've got it at um, at four Eastern. I think they've moved some games up because of four weather, now. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I don't. Okay. So what I'm looking at is just not current. Okay. Possibly. I, I know the game. I know the game. Our, uh, um, Ole Miss and Vanderbilt is tonight. That I know for sure. They've they've toyed around, <laughs> and I didn't check it this morning. But I'm on I'm on the SEC sports website, so that should be right. But okay. um, I'll, I'll I'll pull up the ESPN one. I, I usually go to Division One baseball for all yeah. my info, but I, I'll pull up the uh, ESPN is going to be right because they're the yeah, ones they, carrying it. So they did mess around with them. Um, I, I know during the Gator game yesterday, they announced Bama Tennessee was going to be at like 11 in the morning because uh, I think we probably saw the same thing because they were having some weather come through like uh, right about now. Um, today in Birmingham, so they were trying to afford that. Now they've Alabama, only Tennessee is is still showing eleven a.m. Is okay, that correct? Cool. Is I, I guess <laughs> weird. Like I said, the the SEC uh, SEC sports is showing four, but it would make it more. It would make sense to have it at eleven because you're not. There's no risk if you have it at eleven of it running into the night game. Um, four and four and seven thirty doesn't make sense to me. So I think well, both of those are, are winning, get in, right? We don't have a double elu- right. elimination situation, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. The loser goes okay. home winner plays tomorrow. Florida. So, yeah, State I, I, think, I think you're right. I think Bama Tennessee's at 11 and I think uh, Mississippi and Vanderbilt's tonight. Florida State's playing Miami uh, at three o'clock today, but they, they don't have much of a chance of getting in this thing. They're going to have to win all the way out. And, uh, they, I mean, they laid an egg against, uh, was it, who was it that beat the crap out of him? Was it Both of them got dropped by Duke. Yeah, it was Duke. Yeah, it was Duke. Uh, I mean, that game was, oh, I, I, I was watching that game was over before it started. It was like, <laughs> it was like nine to one. All, you know I mean? I, I, I barely, you know, poured a cup of coffee. I was like, what the hell with this? This is crap. I mean, I kept it on hoping for a comeback, but I was like, this is junk. Um, so, ho- so hopefully, they can can win to ex- extend my weekend watching, but you know, Miami's got a pretty good baseball team in their own right. So uh, yeah, so the, the kind of the consensus is one of those teams is coming to Gainesville for the for the regional. I don't know if I totally agree with that. I think if it's one out of the two, I think it's Miami, and maybe they send uh, FSU to uh, Ruston or one of the sites that's that's kind of one of the Louisiana or Texas sites, but. Um, I don't you know, think obviously. they should put those teams in the same. I've been saying this for years. When they put them in, both in the same bracket, you really narrow the viewing, right? Like Florida should be playing. If Florida's as well as Florida's played, they have they have earned the right not to play one of their arch rivals. Mm-hmm. That's just the way I feel about it. Same thing if you know Florida State has a good year or Miami has a good year. You you win, you should have the right not to play one of your arch rivals because no matter you, you know this, no matter who how much better Florida is than Miami and Florida state this year. It's a rivalry game and one game can get you bounce quickly. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I just, I, I think it's incredibly unfair and normally I wouldn't be standing up for the Gators, but I think it's incredibly unfair for university of Florida team. Who's had a phenomenal year to have to host either Miami or Florida state. I think. They yeah. Should. And especially, especially in our regional um, like yeah, super yeah. sometimes super's different super yeah. i get it you know but i'm talking about in the first regional when there's right when there's six you you have so many options to send play uh teams elsewhere right right Florida state miami is nowhere to bitch about where where they get sent but florida has the right to complain go why am i playing playing these guys when you know was it beginning of this was it the first or second uh weekend of the season didn't miami scald uh the gators yeah yeah, it was um yeah the se- second weekend of the season in in Gainesville really the first weekend of the new stadium against like a good a good opponent so I honestly like, out of the two if they sent one or the other I'd rather see State just because they haven't seen you know Barco Alamon and um, Mace where Miami's already faced all three of those guys it's and, so and, difficult with these you know. with these conference tournaments anyways because you normally send your bum to the fir- to the first game right. 
and you're and I, I, you're watching this like you normally wouldn't do this. You normally wouldn't have the bozo out there pitching first, right? But a lot of the teams send their bum, and FSU got housed because of it. Uh, yeah, I don't. It, it's a it's a weird time. It's a kind of an interesting dynamic. Like for Florida, we just went straight rotation, and the thought behind like none of those guys will pitch this weekend. Like they're done. Right. They won't pitch and they won't pitch until so the regionals. Yeah, so you, I think you give too many games. Mace pitched on like five days. Yeah, I, they they could shorten this this SEC tournament by. They, there's 12 teams that win. They can make it, you know, 10 if they really needed to. If you eight. win out, you should only have to play three or four games tops, because yeah. you're really hurting a team. Like for instance, we already know their names, so we'll we'll take Vanderbilt. Rocker and lighter. If they go the first couple of games, you don't see them the rest of the weekend. Right, they're done. Is yeah, that just, really the is that really the best team in the SEC that's going to win? Yeah, it, it turns it ends up being who can out hit the other guys on the weekend is basically right. what it ends up being. Whoever's but, got the it, hot bullpen survive. Right, 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 exactly. Like I mean, when, when we won it in seventeen, we didn't win the SEC tournament. We in fact we got run ruled by Arkansas, and that was Brady Singer, our best pitcher that that had that happen to him. Um, oh, by the way, get, that guy's pissing me off in fantasy baseball, man. I've got that guy, and he got hammered again like yesterday, but that's a different, yeah. Thing. I thought I was going to be able to catch some of that yesterday, and they had me blocked out on the um Xfinity app, so you I wasn't happy anything. about that one. He went like two and two thirds and gave up like six earned runs or something. Yeah, he's uh, he's learning so, sophomore year, he's learning some lessons out there, I think. But uh, eventually, I think he's going to be he'll be good eventually, but he's um, but you're you're right though, like in Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt's an interesting one because they. Honestly, behind Leiter and, and and Rocker, there's not a lot there. There's a lot of freshmen, and they're going to be good one day. But uh, when when they get if they win tonight and they get to Saturday Sunday, there's not a lot of left in the tank for them either. The, the Arkansas is still my pick because they hit better than everybody else, and then they've got the best closer uh, in the SEC and Cops, and he can go a long way too as far as pitches go. So I would tend to um, think that a Vanderbilt when they get to the actual regional, the the, the first regional. Mm -hmm that you're going to put your Sunday starter as your first game when you play that nobody, whoever Vanderbilt plays, hoping you can get through that so you have Rocker and Lighter to finish off the the weekend. I would think that's what you would want to do if you're Vanderbilt. Yeah, I, that's probably the way they go. They, they, sat, they sat them in the SEC tournament. I forget who they threw on. Uh, Wednesday, but it, it obviously they threw Rocker last night, so and they'll throw lighter today. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting strategy. It all depends on who you, who you match up with. Like you here in town, UNF and JU, they're they're in the Final Four of their conference tournament. JU's been horrible all year, but um, they're in the winners bracket of the Final Four of their tournament, so they win two more games. They're they're in. JU's got a really good Friday starter. They don't have anything else other than that. So if if they end up in Gainesville. Um, you know, that kid gives up like four hits a game, uh, even for us, because they, they came to Gainesville and, and won that Friday night game, much to everyone's chagrin, of course. But if they come back to Gainesville, like, you know, you got to watch it. You can't you can't give them five runs and then all of a sudden, you know, you can't touch their guy. So it, it is it's all about that matchup. If you get a, a team that's totally overmatched, you can get away with throwing a, a midweek game in that or midweek guy in that first game. But if you get somebody that you know, can really hit. You don't want to take your chances. Last thing you want to do is try and come out of the loser's bracket for, you know, five straight games, which is super tough, even at home. Right. Uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, golf got the big news that, that there's going to be the match again. Um, is Does this one have your imagination captured as much as the first one? Um, probably not really. I, it's funny. The, the first one I thought was, it was okay. I, I didn't make it through all of it. I watched the first few holes and then kind of circled back to it every now and then. I, I think the coolest part for some of these is you get to see a course that you don't usually get to see all that much. And, um, when they had that one at Seminole down in South Florida with, um, Justin Thomas and Dustin Johnson and, uh, Rory and, and Matthew Wolf, all tailor-made guys. Um, that was cool because you don't get to see that course on TV that much. This one's uh, some course up in Montana, which I guess would be pretty cool. I don't know about having to listen to DeChambeau on a hot mic for five hours. Um, there's just not – eventually they'll figure this out. Yeah, I don't know his personality. We were talking about this yesterday. and He's a dork. Much better insight. I, you know, we know what Rodgers is. We know what Brady is. Phil Mickelson's usually yeah. very uh, like interesting quippy. to listen to, right? Yeah. What is DeChambeau? I've never really heard him speak. Does he have much of a personality? I just I just can't wait for like 
forced trash talk and like awkwardness. It's just, they, they need, they need three foursomes is what they need. Like get like, you know, six golfers, six celebrities, put them in three groups because you don't have enough. There's too much downtime. Like they, right. They hit, they either they're walking or they're in a car, but they, you know, they, talking, they interview them. They you know, bring in, you know, surprisingly last year. And of course the, this is the thing that, that gets me the most about it. Last year was different. We didn't have anything to watch. So we were excited right. to watch sports. And they came back, and it, to me, it kind of opened the door. I know NASCAR had been back, but th this really opened the door to sports. Mm -hmm. um, what surprised me last year was the stories that Brady had. I did not expect that, right? Yeah. This year, he's going to be all out of those. And so I, I'm with you. They need more than four because it's just not – it's, you know, it's like you said, they need at least two foursomes, probably three foursomes. And, and go from there and with the rivalry that's uh boiling with DeChambeau and Kepka, I'd, I'd like to see those two in a group mic'd up yeah <laughs> it doesn't yeah, and that's, that's, like been, it, that's been fun all week by the way this is this is twice now I've I don't know if I take credit for it or 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 not but this is twice now that I've poo-pooed Rory and poo-pooed Phil Mickelson and then by the end of the weekend they went out and, and finished it off Rory a few weeks ago and Mickelson over the weekend but I'm not a giant Mickelson guy. I, he's a great golfer. I, I think, you know, he's okay in my book. I, I don't hate him, but I, I'm not in love with him. By any I'm means. the same way with him. I don't, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know why I've never been a huge fan. I'm just like, okay, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't mind him. Yeah. I, I've but that was, for times, but I don't yeah. really care. That was awesome last week. I, I, I just wish Captain would have hit a couple more fairways down the stretch and made it interesting. You could tell his knee was still bugging him, especially day four. And then none of the other guys, Streelman wasn't going to make a run. Um, I forget who else was up there. We we're just kind of sitting waiting for somebody else to make a couple birdies in a row. And um, it just never happened. But the course was awesome. I, I really wish Kiowa would host more events. Uh, it's given us one of the best Ryder Cups ever and now a, a historic uh, PGA championship. So hopefully we'll see that on the schedule more. But yeah, that was that was fantastic last week. It was really cool to watch. I agree. Uh, they, I'm I'm looking forward to the U.S. Open with it being in San Diego. Mickelson right. having a chance to finally get that monkey off his back in his hometown. To yeah, me, that doesn't be, it doesn't set up any any better than that. And then the rough stick, which brings DeChambeau back into it, and um, it's I mean anybody's going to have a shot there. It's, especially I mean, Spieth is at the top of the leaderboard again this week. Obviously, just after day one, but that tournament's in Texas. Usually plays well there, so that'll. That'll be fun for a few hours on, on Sunday, but this is a great time of year, man. So much going on sports that we follow. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be football, but major league baseball, the, this Knicks Hawk series has been fantastic. The first two games of copy into those um, just so much going on right now. It's, it's really a fun time of the year. All right. Uh, we're about at the end of it. What is your walk off for the day, sir? Everybody, uh, you know, have a, have a good Memorial day weekend. Remember what it's about. And uh, we'll, we'll catch up next Friday. All right, brother. Uh, good luck to your boys, and uh, I hope you wish us luck too because we're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Take care. Have a good weekend. All right, brother.